Good morning, everybody. This is uh, Monday morning, beginning of a new week. I hope it's a good week for you all. Thank you for joining us with our early morning devotions. We've been talking about some beautiful stuff as it relates to Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals us, a beautiful name that was given to God by Moses out there in the wilderness. And uh, God is indeed the God who heals. He has different ways of doing it. And I'm going to be talking about that this coming week. But we've been talking about, first of all, the fact that we need healing. We've been asking the question as to why we need to be healed. Most of it relates to either my sin or somebody else's sin or the sin of the world. That is really the basis of why we need healing. And then we've been talking about what God heals. We've said He heals the body, the soul, He revives the spirit. But today, I guess this is perfect for the context of our country. God is able to heal our land, heal our land. I'm sure you're so familiar with that verse in 2 Chronicles 7, 14 that says, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, if they will turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, forgive their sins, and I will heal their land. Boy, does our land need healing right now. Well, this passage has some great advice for us with regard to the healing of the land that is our country and in a macro sense, the world. God is able to heal. Now, I was thinking about this and I thought, you know, when you look at the history of Israel and you see how blessed they were when they had a good king. And when they were well led, the people were happy, the people were provided for, the battles were won, all because of the power of one good man. And as he led the people, as he was God-fearing, as he fulfilled the laws of God, as he spoke to the people about the laws of God and insisted on them following God's laws, there was a natural healing that came to that land because there was a great leader and there was a great king. We don't have too much say in who the leader of the country is, the leader of the king. We get a vote and we get to pray for that person and we command it to do that. But this verse puts a lot of the responsibility of the healing of our country into the hands of his people. Now those are the Christians. We have to believe that. We're not talking about people who do not name the name of Christ, who do not follow Christ, who do not acknowledge Christ. He's putting the responsibility of the healing of the land into the hands of the church the church and the church is the one who's responsible basically according to this passage for the healing of the land my people people is is us I want to suggest to you you know we're going through this this whole thing of the the coronavirus and we're talking about all these uh, injections that we can get, these inoculations that we can get against the virus. And there is a thing that they talk about called herd immunity. And herd immunity is when enough people have had this, this, in, uh, this injection or this inoculation and they don't get the virus, then the impact of so many people getting it will have a huge impact on the health, the physical health of the land. And I'm thinking to myself, I wonder if that is not true in a spiritual sense as well. If Christians stopped playing with the inoculation of the gospel, where we just have a little bit of it to make a little bit of difference. But if we really, if the Christians really acted like Christians, what would that do in our land? If the Christians in this land really humbled themselves and really prayed and sought his face and turned from their wicked ways, then God would say there is enough of them for herd immunity just naturally to have an impact in the world around us. Now, I know that God does not need and never has needed a majority in order to do anything. But he's telling us here that when enough people stand up and believe and behave like believers, there will naturally become some kind of effect on the healing of our country. So the impact for us, for our land, is in our hands. So I want to suggest to you today that if you are a believer, if you're not, it's wonderful that you're listening to this and I hope that you become one and, and that would be absolutely awesome. But for those of us who call ourselves Christians, it's time to rise up and stop just being calling ourselves Christians but to behave like Christians. 
and then we love one another and we and we we pray for one another we care for one another it has to it has to according to the word of god have a huge impact on the land around us so church this is a message to us today it's time to rise up it's time to humble ourselves it's time to pray. It's time to, to, to do away with our wicked ways and our, our, our attitudes towards one another. And it's time to clean up our act and allow God to do what this verse has said He will do. You want healing, church? It begins with us. You want healing in this country? It begins with us. So today is a, is a serious message. I hope that we will respond to it. Stop passing the buck, saying if only the government would do this, if they would do that, would do that. Uh-uh. That's one aspect. But if they're not going to do that, here's the other way around. Let the church rise up, behave like the church, and watch what God will do for the healing of this beautiful land. Let's do that today, people, and the days to come. God bless you. Have a fantastic week. Now let's go and save the world. Cheers, guys.